Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, Zach here once again for Friday Night Flies at Bass Pro Shops in Tawasson. Um, this week, the weather is kind of turning around, not really. Um, I don't know, it was looking great there the last couple days, now it's gone to... It's gone out the window again. Might snow this weekend. Who knows what's going to happen. Um, so my mindset's kind of changed from winter steelhead to still water fishing. Um, last time we were out, last week, uh, a couple of the lakes that I like to fish, we drove by and they were ice free. And the water temperature's coming up. I know, uh, the, uh, what are they called? Uh, I'm drawing a blank right now. The, uh, the guys that stock the lakes anyway. Um, go fish BC. Um, Freshwater Fishery Society of BC, that's what I'm looking for. Um, they've started to stock in lakes again, so that means uh, there's going to be some great, great fishing in the next uh, little bit here, once they get those uh, fresh fish into the lakes. Um, there probably wasn't much of a winter kill on the lower mainland lakes. Um, so there should be some lunkers in there that uh, survived the winter and have just been feeding and gorging. So um, I've had some really good days early on in uh, early on the season before. Um, if you check out our... Um, website and our Facebook page we've got a uh, we did a little post of some of our favorites um, early season fly patterns so definitely check that out so with that in mind um, I am doing a little still water pattern um, this one is kind of a it's it's a BC pattern um, called the 52 Buick uh, not one that I've ever fished not one that I'd never really tied until the other day um, keep hearing great things about it so I'm definitely going to give it a go and after tying it you know what once you get the proportions down and everything dialed in it's actually a pretty cool looking fly it's a great little damsel imitation um, definitely worthy of a spot in your box so it goes together super easy it's got like four materials um, if that one two three yeah four materials um, so it goes together super quick um, it's easy to do variations on um, it's a deadly little nymph pattern so definitely worth having in your box like I said Anyways, let's uh, head on down and check this one out. All right, so there it is, the 52 Buick. So, as I give you the slow roll there, you're probably thinking that fly looks very similar or familiar. And you know what? I have a feeling, I was trying to do some research on this fly. There's not a lot of history on it out there. I believe it's probably based off of the Doc Spratly, just without the wing. So what I think happened some guy was fishing a Spratly and the wing got chewed off and all of a sudden he's like oh my god I got the next great pattern basically a Spratly without the wing so that's what I think happened it's a cool looking fly pretty deadly um, hopefully you can see this here I've got a couple different color variations going on so some dark olives, some light olives, some yellow olives um, take your pick it's a pretty cool looking fly so this one you're going to want to tie in sizes 10s to 12s. Go bigger or smaller if you like. That's all up to you. Just grab a hook here. So the hook I'm using, this is a size 12. As I started tying these, it's totally different going from like a 4 inch steelhead fly to a size 12 lake fly. This is just a Mustad 33.99, size 12. You can use your favorite nymph hook, whatever you like. This one, it's pretty solid. Nice, good, uh, good, strong wire to it. And for thread, just some Danville 70 in black. You can use olive thread if you like. It's all up to you. And I'm just going to take my thread just to the hook barb. And we're going to add in our tail. So our tail for this fly, so instead of uh, pheasant tail like you'd use for a Spratly, we're using guinea fowl. So this is from Superfly, this is a small dot. Um, this works great for the size uh, 12 flies. Um, Susan sent us some stuff, some large eye. That was great for the larger ones. Um, so definitely check out what she's got on her site, Chinook Wind Outfitters. We've got the small small eye here in stock at the store. So I'm just gonna clean the feather and I'm gonna use this whole feather for the entire fly. So I like a fairly bulky tail. So basically I'm gonna separate good section of it. I'm going to use this portion and this portion for the tail and the tip part portion for the uh, for the throat of the fly. So 
I'm just going to line up those tips, like so. I'm going to tear them away from the stem. I'm just going to fold them in on themselves, just so they're all kind of the same length. And I'm going to tie in a fairly short tail. It's a little shorter than the body length. I'm just going to do two wraps to hold that clump there. And now I'm going to do the same to the other side here. And just align those tips. Probably shouldn't have worn an olive colored shirt today. Hopefully it's coming through okay. Now I'm going to stack. Got some longer ones there. Stack this right on top. Another two turns. So you can make this tail as big or as uh, small as you like. And now I'm just going to shorten it a little bit. I'm just going to pull that back. That's roughly the length that I want. And I'm going to take my thread underneath the tail. I'm going to pull it up. Just to help prop that tail up, that's going to stop it from flopping down. So a couple wraps forward. I'm going to trim this body at a taper. Just at an angle like so. We're going to secure, lock all that down. Taking touch and turns all the way up. And as you can see, I've left a little bit, a couple mil at the at the eye of the hook, just for uh, just to create a nice small head on the fly. So for a rib, we're going to use some uni French oval and small and gold. Um, the traditional colors for these is olive. I'm going to be doing up some in black too, just because. And for that, I'll be using a silver rib. And I'll be using just natural guinea for the tail and the throat. So I got my rib tied in. And now for the body, you can use chenille if you like, if you want to speed up the process. Just for the bugginess, I'm going to use some uh, seals fur from Superfly. So this is the assortment pack. Down here I've got four shades of olive. Basically four different variations right there. The black is there. There's even some browns, which are quite nice. Um, and even some claret if you want to try that. I know I've done some uh, Spratleys. If I can pull this one out here. I'm not super happy with how this wing sits, but I've done some Spratleys in Claret. That's a sexy looking fly. I know the fish are going to smash that. So I'm going to do a golden version, which is this guy right here, the second one in. So I'm just going to take a small clump here. You can always add more. I'm just going to dub this onto my thread. Create a fairly tight dubbing noodle here. Basically just kind of get it started. It's okay if it's a little bit loose. So once it's on there, spin it up. That helps to tighten up the noodle. And we're just going to wrap this all the way forward. I like to slightly taper the body as we go. Just keep pulling down, tightening it up. As you can see already, this dubbing is super buggy. You can use um, hare's ear dubbing or squirrel. That's all up to you. I've been using a lot of seals for lately and it's a dubbing that I really starting to fall in love with. So there we go, so there's our body. Now we're gonna rib the fly. Four to five wraps, probably four on the smaller ones. Two, three, four, we'll end it on the fifth one. The larger ones you can get uh, probably five wraps of the, of the rib. And the key to this fly is the oval tinsel. What, the little information that I can find on this fly is that it really sets this fly apart from Spratly, which I do use oval tinsel on. Um, a lot of guys will use mylar tinsel as well. So this is pretty buggy already. If you want to just bug it out a little bit more, take your popsicle stick with some Velcro on it. Just tap that body ever so slightly. Any of the extra long ones, just pull them free. So I'm going to invert my vise and I'm going to tie in the throat. So I've saved the tip of that guinea feather. I'm just going to kind of stroke all the fibers together in my fingers. Kind of fold them on themselves. And now I have a nice little throat. So this, I want the tips to kind of 
just go in on the hip hook point. Just gonna hold that on either side of the hook. Just do a pinching wrap once, twice, a couple wraps to secure it in place. Now I'm just gonna play with those fibers a little bit with my thumb. Just to get that sitting how I like. Now I can trim away the excess. Good sharp pair of scissors. Always help. I'll just clean up that head a little bit. Now to finish this fly off. Single pan strand of peacock curl. So make sure those really, the iridescent fibers are pointing down when you tie this in. Bigger versions, you can definitely run uh, two strands if you like, just to help bulk it up a little bit more. And we'll just take a few wraps. You can make this as full or as thin as you like. I'm gonna go four wraps, that should be enough. Trap that guy in. Like so. Wraps in front. Now, keeping my thread tight, you can just pull that peacock curl straight off. A couple more wraps to secure it, and we'll go straight into a wet finish. So as you can see, it's a very simple fly. Yet yeah, it is deadly, deadly effective on our BC waters. Two to be safe. You can add a head cement if you want. There's your little slow roll. Probably pull some of those longer fibers out. There you have it, 52 Buick. All right guys, there it is, 52 Buick. Like I said, super simple, deadly effective. Wow. As you can see, one I'm filling up uh, my boxes with. It's, uh, it's been a fun one to tie. Can't wait to fish it. Uh, hopefully next week, hopefully this weather turns around and we're uh, back into still water action. Bust out the four weights and have some fun on those, uh, on those rainbows that are kicking around. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, if you're in the lower mainlands, we are doing a drop-in fly tying night at Bass Pro Shops in the restaurant. Um, we're gonna start doing that the last Thursday of every month. So the first one is gonna be on the 29th from 6.30 to 9 p.m. on the Thursday. Um, so if you're able to make it, head on over to Uncle Buck's. We get half an hour of happy hour. Uh, so you get a cheap cheap beverage and uh, or two, or three, depends how quickly you can drink and uh, uh, deals on appies and stuff like that. So we'll have uh, a room blocked off in there, we'll have the game on, whatever's on, and we'll just be sitting around tying a bunch of bugs. Um, so if you're interested in that, just it's drop in, like I said, bring your own gear. I'll have some Superfly materials um, that we use for some of our classes here. And, uh, but yeah, bring your own stuff and we'll just come around, open theme, tie whatever you want. Um, I expect it to be quite popular. So if you're in the area, come on down. Last Thursday of every month, 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. in uh, Uncle Buck's. Um, I'll probably be tinkering with some still water stuff. Um, yeah, maybe some steelhead stuff. You guys saw that glass shrimp that I did on our uh, Facebook Live event. Maybe I'll be tying that one too. Uh, who knows? We'll, we'll see what happens. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll try and get some guest tires in at some point as well. I know the boys from Pemby definitely want to uh, take part as well. Um, yeah, so we'll post that on our Facebook page. Uh, probably before this airs. Um, yeah, that's about it. So hit us up on Facebook with any of your questions. Hit us up on Instagram, all Friday Night Flies. Hit us up with your email questions at pros at FridayNightFlies.com. Um, hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next week. Friday Night Flies would like to thank the following sponsors. Superfly, Solarez, Chinook Wind Outfitters, Dr. Slick, Griffin, Stonefoe. Mm -hmm.